Hello heroes, it's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, where just in 15 minutes a day, we'll fill your mind, your body, and your future. All right, for the announcements, make sure you're checking us out on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes under Dr. Zeno. Thank you so much for your comments over uh, episode 50. It was uh, a great one. It was awesome. And uh, Friday, tomorrow, episode 51, or the season finale, will be on. So make sure you check that out and, um, and comment and share as much as possible. And then we'll take a little bit of break, and we'll start maybe running some of the reruns as well. So once again, uh, just thank you so much for everything uh, over this last uh, probably 17 weeks that we've been doing this. And in 17 weeks, it's amazing you know, to see everything that was accomplished. And there really is a formula. There's a success formula for it, and one of the variables is the unknowns. You know, the thing is, is, as you have the desire to do that goal that you want to do, and you go for it, and then you embrace the unknowns along the way, there's, there's literally a specific formula to do it. You know, I look in the past, I've done it in, in multiple areas of my life, and they were very different. And uh, when, you, when you combine those things, and you're able to see the full blueprint of it, you know, I'm hopefully give you amazing inspiration to give yourself permission to do the same. All right, so today, we're going to get into something good about winning, you know, because winning is good. We want to make winning a habit. So a very important term. So remember, for the past month, you know, we, we, we've been doing this a month now just on how to win and reach your goals. Uh, a lot of practical stuff. And so now I'm getting into more of the head, the head stuff, the headspace stuff. So today we're going to talk about, well, actually yesterday we talked about why? Become irrational and intolerant, right? Become irrational and tolerant to others because that means that you're on the way of doing it. Here's another term we're gonna to use today that I'm very excited about and that's the term obsessed. Become obsessed because remember, we were talking about balance is like a, a fairy tale unicorn. There's really no, so much, so, no such thing. So here we come, you wanna become obsessed or be known as obsessed by other people because usually the mediocre or the lazy, that's the term they use to define the discipline. You know, anytime someone says, oh, you're just obsessed, you say, thank you. I think that's awesome. I would love to be obsessed and be obsessed on many different levels. If you look at the greatest champions or winners or people that did amazing things, think about it. You will, at the end of your life, you will only be known for the thing in your life to the degree that you were most obsessed about, right? You know, I mean, you, you could have kids and be known as a mom or a dad, but so is a lot of these uh, people we talk about in history. They were parents, but you don't know them as uh, Abraham Lincoln, the parent. You don't know them as Martin Luther King, you know, the parent. You know them for the area of their life that they were most obsessed with. Because the area of your life that you, the, the, the degree and the consistency of the area of your life that you're most obsessed with is directly proportional to the success that you'll have in that area. Because it just, because when you're obsessed with it, what happens? You think about it more than anything else. And when you think about something more than anything else, you brainwash yourself in it more than anything else, you practice it more than anything else, you put the hours in, you desire it more than anything else. It seems to fulfill your human needs more than anything else. That's why we become obsessed with things. And if you're obsessed in a good thing, then that's the thing you'll be known for. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people that they're known for the things that they were obsessed in that were destructive. Uh, I'll name a couple. So, you know, when we think of Pete Rose, right? What's, what do we know Pete Rose for? Number one, amazing, amazing baseball player. But then something happened. What do you know him for? Baseball player, what? And gambler, someone who, who uh, bet against his team. Now, you see, the gambling was also an obsession. So again, it proves the point that you will only be known at the end of your life for the things that you're most obsessed in. And the, the, the degree of your obsession and the intensity of the obsession, the, the obsession will be directly proportional to the success you have in that area. So that's why the lazy people call the successful people obsessed. You want to be obsessed. Grant Cardone, he, had a, he wrote a book actually called Be Obsessed or Be Average. He had a great quote. He goes, uh, the food of the genius is obsession. I'll say that again. The food of the genius is obsession. So in any or whatever that is, you get fully obsessed in. So I was just going around, the, you know, looking back in my life on all the signposts in different areas. And I, re I realized they had two main things. They had four. Actually, I wrote it down. There's 40 main things. But there's two main things that were actually the gas to the fire and one was desire. Remember we talked about yesterday, what is the only reason that you, you need to do something for? Plain and simple, just because you want to. Desire, really desire is, is the only reason. That's, and 
You got to be okay with that and others got to be okay with it. I know it doesn't make sense logically, but here's the thing. The brain thinks, right? The brain thinks logically, spirit feels. So you can't, oh, I know, I know, you can't always go by logic. I get it. You got to go by feel sometimes. Because how many, how many people, they logically know that smoking is bad for their health. It causes cancer. They read it every time they take a cigarette out of the box, but yet they still smoke. Right, right. You follow? So they, they know it logically. Well, so why are you smoking? Because they want to. That's it. Why are people lined up at Starbucks? Because they want to. Why did that person cheat on their wife or their spouse? Because they wanted to. Like, so there's no excuse for them. Like you take full responsibility. But when you're successful in a certain area, because you wanted to. So I, there's no, I'm not even, this is not a right or wrong thing. It's that when you're doing something, your only need is, to, when you have desire in it and you want it, that's, what, that's why we get things. That's why people go into debt. That's why people uh, don't. Uh, pay for things that they need. That's why uh, people live in regret. I mean, it's all, all the things we do, the bottom line is because we wanted to. So be okay that whatever you're doing right now, the current state you're in is because you wanted to be there and you did the things to get there. So if you want to get out of that state, you got to change and want something else. Desire. Then the second thing is obsession. Whether I think of, you know, getting uh, winning New York state, state top honors in piano when I was younger, you know, when I, you know, when, whether it be bodybuilding, whether it be, uh, even in graduate school, getting great grades or, uh, going back to win the Mr. Universe again and beating a life threatening terminal disease, you know, um, chiropractic become one of the largest clinics in the world on that. Uh, and even what you guys don't see, cause you probably don't think it looking at me, you know, I remember when I decided to go all raw for two years and I got down to 150 pounds on purpose and I look like a, a skeleton with skin on it. You know, I just, that was a pattern in my life that when I desired to do something or I made up my mind, I got incredibly obsessed in it. And that tends to be the things I'm, I'm known for. So what was, what's obsessed look like? So obsessed, one of the things was, I immersed myself in everything I can know about that that goal, right? So if it was, uh, let's say, when I ate raw, right? So I read all the literature, and listened to all, you know, all, not all of it, of course, but I just listened to tons of audios and literature on on raw eating and and all the detoxification protocol. I got really obsessed into detoxification protocols and just went all out. And you know, I, I you, you you kind of brainwash yourself with it, right? You get you immerse it. You like that's it's just so much on your mind. You, you, that's all you're thinking about. And then because that's the way you get from A to Z a lot quicker. So one thing is, you know, another way when you're obsessed, you you find a coach, you find a mentor, to find someone who who sees things that you don't see, or you get books that are mentorships for you. You know, like you don't need a, a human mentor. What you're obsessed is. You know, it, it just, you get, the people call it that laser focus, not laser focus, it just, again, you're so focused on 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 that thing you're doing because you desire it so much, um, it, it does, again, then it starts to seem irrational to other people and uh, you become intolerant to other things. So that obsession part is huge. So whatever area it is in your life that you really wanna become extremely successful in, in other people's opinions, you need to cross the line into obsession where, you think about it, you work harder on it, you you go the extra mile on it, you invest in it more, you focus on it more, where everybody stops, you go further, and it's those little, little percent, and you don't have to go much further, maybe 2% further, not much, but it's in that one to 2% that separates you from the mediocre crowd to becoming obsessed and therefore successful. I'm just, when I'm talking to you right now, when you're listening to this, just think of all just some of the people that are in the news and so in a good way, in a good way, not bad, but even in a bad way. Let's talk about the good though. You know, they, they were clearly, they were obsessed. You know, Sylvester Stallone's a huge, I'm a huge Rocky fan. And, and you know, when you know the backstory, man, these guys were totally obsessed. Like in Rocky, uh, when he made Rocky four and stuff like that with Drago, for those of you who are, are 40, uh, that was my favorite Rocky four. So Drago was the Russian in the Rocky movie. And, uh, he, he would make them train three hour, three to six hours a day to get into like bodybuilder shape because he says we have to look like the fittest people, you know, the most extreme example of an athlete. So totally obsessed on that. And then in the actual boxing scenes, like 
um, he would actually have Dolph Lundgren, which was the actor, punch him full out as hard as they could. So in the ring, like he literally would get punched. So a lot of those scenes, yeah, some they're acting, of course, you know, they're doing that thing. But a lot of the scenes, like it was like punch me as hard as you can, like totally involved, totally upset, like all going the extra mile uh, for his craft, for his career to make it look as real as possible, even though it was rocky and it was a little fictitious. And uh, there was actually, during that thing, Dolph Lundgren punched Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, in the chest. And Dolph Lundgren's like six foot something. The guy's, he's like the, you know, the, the epitome of like the Aryan race. Boom, punches him. He punched him so hard, it put, it put Sylvester Stallone in the hospital three days because his heart swelled. He got water around the heart. He was in the hospital three, three weeks, I apologize. And because it, it was, the concussive force was like a steering wheel hitting you in the chest. And another movie, you know, see, uh, another movie I think was Expendables. You know, there was a wrestler, Steve, uh, Stone called Steve Austin. He was in the Expendables. And there was a scene when, uh, you know, the wrestler just would, uh, you know, run at him and tackle him. And he goes, just talk to me with all you got. Now, Stallone at this point is in his 60s, right? Probably 67 at this point. He goes, just, yeah, no, hit me as hard as you can. And he hit him, and there was fake movie bricks over here. And the way Stone Cold hit him, and he's a wrestler, w, you know, WCW, uh, WWF champion, um, hit him and knocked him into the brick, broke his neck. So he broke two bones in his neck. He was in the hospital for like three weeks, gets back on the set. So when we tell that story, it's totally obsessed. It's like, dude, that is, that's crazy. We say it's crazy. It's just an obsessive person. You know, when he wrote the, the uh, screenplay for Rocky, he had no job. He slept at bus stations a lot. He even sold his dog just to pay for food. Or he knew that he couldn't take care of his dog, so he sold his dog to somebody. And, and he said, if I, don't, if I get a job, I'll get comfortable, so I'll just keep on going and going. And then, then he was offered money. Just think, had no money. He was offered money, but he wouldn't be the actor. They said, listen, we'll pay for this script. Because what happened, he went to the library. He would sleep in the library, too when he didn't have a place to stay. And in, in 24 hours, he wrote the script for, for Rocky One. He wrote it, he just got obsessed, wrote the whole thing. And no one would cast him as the actor. And he says, forget it, I'm not doing it, because he envisioned it. I'm not, I'm because he obsessed, I'm, I'm Rocky, I'm the actor. And they pa he passed, he passed like 100 grand from nothing, for selling his dog, just think of that thing, you think anybody would do it. So finally, uh, he got kind of a lowball type of thing to be the actor. It became Academy, Academy Award best-selling. Went back, bought, bought his dog for fifteen thousand uh, dollars from the guy, and uh, put the guy in the movie as a cameo. So when you look at the success of people, what I what did I say before? How do we start with it? The severity and the, the the intensity and the degree of your obsession is as uh, as parallel to the degree of success you'll have. So when we hear stories like that, you're like, wow, I wouldn't do that. I know, I wouldn't do all those things either. But yeah, he, he, his movies have done over a billion dollars and he's still producing and acting and doing, because he's, he's, he, has, he has a desire to do things in the world, to, to expand his potential further than he ever could imagine so that they don't stop. Billy Graham, the same way. We know Billy Graham is what? One of the greatest evangelists of all time. And he tried to retire many times. He can't. He, that's what he was chosen to do, and that was his obsession. So when people, the degree of their obsession, the intensity of this obsession is directly proportional to your success. So whatever goal you do, if it is an eating plan, become obsessed over it. Why you bring your meals to work? Because I'm obsessed. I'm going to reach my goal. I don't care what you think, you know, or, or when you, you got to lose weight or whatever that's going to do. Become obsessed in the goal that means much to you. Or if it's your marriage, become obsessed in having a great marriage. You know, so, so just it's okay to become obsessed. From yesterday, it's, it's okay to be irrational and it's okay to be intolerant. And so it's okay to have desire and say, I just want to. And all those things combined create amazing success in your life. So hopefully that was uh, a blessing to you guys. Hopefully you guys uh, receive that and give yourself permission to do so, to get obsessive on something. Now the thing is, remember, desire has to come before obsession. So you really can't um, get obsessed on something that you don't desire or want. Also in a bad way, addiction is an obsession. So obsession is very powerful. But remember, all the principles I talk about, they're, they're powerful universal laws that could be used for good, which we want, and success. But they're also, just like any other law, there's a flip side of the coin, it can be used you know, to destroy you as well. So use them wisely, become obsessed in something that you could future face and say, listen, this will be the best thing for me and my family and the people around me in the world. Make sure it's always win, win, win. What's win, win, win? It's a win for other people, it's a win for you, and it's a win for the world. Have an amazing day. Thanks for watching 15 Minute Fuel.
which in 15 minutes a day will food your mind, your body, and your future. Please check us out on social, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all the other things under Dr. Zeno. Please comment or a direct message, private message for any things and topics you want to have, uh, you know, hear talked about or any questions you do have, and I could use it as a case study, and I'll keep your name anonymous, of course, and just have an amazing day. Thanks, Facebook, Instagram. Hold on. I'll be with you in a second. We'll see you guys soon.